I'm so excited. After 23 years, the Fountain Blue is finally open, and in this video, I'm gonna show you around. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see what I can see. I'm gonna take you through the second level first, and then we'll go down to the ground floor. One of their high-end steak restaurants, Pappy Steak, right here, next to the entrance to the conference center, the parking garage, and the Blue Live Theater. This is where they had Justin Timberlake headlining on their opening night. The box office is over there. Uh, if you were to go up to the third floor, that's where the pool lives, their nightclub, um, the like pool lounge bar, that's all gonna open in the spring. So I can't show you that yet. Uh, but what I will show you is all the things that are open. This hotel just opened mid-December of 2023 and I'm doing this walking tour on Christmas Eve. So this is two weeks after grand opening and I'd really consider it kind of a soft opening. But I think one of the neat things about this second floor are all of the viewpoints down to the casino. Uh, it reminds me of kind of like the Cosmopolitan if you gave it a bit of a Miami white vibe. There's a lot of white here because the original Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami is a big kind of white uh, building. So white is definitely a big theme throughout here, but they've also incorporated kind of the peel uh, pool beach vibe and a bit of like the kind of like maybe like Cuban vibe with like wooden chairs and things like that. So here in the food court, we have Bar Ito where you can get Tamaki hand rolls three for $33. Back over here, we've got the breakfast place in the food court, El Bagel, which has some pretty good bagels. I had one of those this morning. I had the uh, bacon, egg, and cheese on the everything bagel. That was $14. They also have a baller bagel that you can get for $130, which uh, comes with caviar on it, but you can see it's a pretty good bagel making operation. Over here, we've got Capone's. Capone's is burgers, fries, and shakes. They open at 11 a.m. and on weekends they close at 3 a.m. So this one's open for your late night food. A burger here is gonna cost you about $13 for the classic. Next up, we've got tacos over at Roadside Tacos. Uh, tacos here are uh, about six, seven, and eight dollars, depending upon what meat you get. Uh, but you can see them making the tacos fresh here on the grill with all of the toppings on it. And then just over here, we have Miami Slice, which is a pizza place. Uh, what's sort of interesting about this one is at least at dinner time, it operates as like um, table service, where like they'll take your order to be seated but at lunchtime, then you go over and just get like pizza by the slice. So they operate differently in the daytime versus nighttime. And in case you're wondering right now, it is daytime and here you can see them cooking up some of those pizzas right there. All right, going over this way, uh, on this side, we've got Nona. What's Nona? Nona has sandwiches, sides, and soup. And then over here, we have one of many bars at the Fountain Blue. This is the, I'm gonna call it the food court bar. Over here is Kimoto. This restaurant is only open for dinner, but they specialize in Peking duck. And here at dinner time, they're hanging the Peking ducks. Uh, most of the restaurants like Pappy Steak and this, you can't really see from the outside, which I find kind of weird because I sort of like to look in and decide if I want to eat there or not, but I think they're trying to make the restaurants exclusive or something like that. Uh, if that's what they're going for, I guess it, I, I guess it worked because we can't see it on this video. And then finally, there's a coffee shop up here where they've got pastries, smoothies, and coffees. Okay, so now this is the shopping promenade, a bunch of things that will be opening soon, a cantina. There's another little seating area over here. We're gonna go down that shopping promenade, but I wanna show you the seating area with these very beach vibey chairs. People just love to hang out here and enjoy the view of the casino. Like, it legitimately is a nice view. I mean, at the Fountain Blue in Miami, you'd be looking at the ocean. Here, you're looking at the casino. Underneath these little roofs, these are the um, dealer tables. Uh, I think they did that so they can put cameras closer to uh, the actual tables. Oh, and then there's the lobby bar right in the middle right there, underneath that really big 
chandelier. Okay, let's check out the shopping promenade that is mostly coming soon, and then we'll work our way downstairs. Restrooms over here behind these curtains, some shop coming soon on our left, some shop coming soon on our right. Kind of a circular vibe. Uh, interesting uh, half sphere lights on the top, kind of a blue wavy carpet down here. A few high-end clothing stores here already, Missoni and Giuseppe Zanotti with some really fancy looking shoes. My four-year-old daughter often asks me if I like sparkly things and boy, those are some sparkly shoes, let me tell you. Uh, now, you know, as I've been around this hotel, I'm staying here for two nights uh, and the staff has all been really wonderful and pleasant. Uh, I've, a number of them have come up and said like, oh my gosh, you're here, Yellow Productions. So <clears throat> it's neat that there's many people that work here that are also fans of the channel. There is another set of escalators here that'll take you down to like the lobby bar or up to the soon to be open pool. Alexander Wong coming soon over here. And then this is the set of escalators that'll bring you up, um, and that we're actually gonna go down uh, to one of the uh, two main strip entrances. This is like a breakfast and lunch restaurant. You can see it has a very kind of like pink vibe in there. Uh, this is La Fontaine. Uh, and so this morning you'll find things on the menu like uh, well, I guess now it's lunchtime. So anyway, there were some lobster rolls, but you'll find eggs benedict, um, omelets, coca dolce for some high-end chocolates. There is another coffee shop up here, Cafe Guto. Uh, this is where uh, I was recognized last night. Morris and Company for clothing. The guest room elevators are back that way, as is the hotel's spa and nail salon. The fitness center is over here, really big fitness center. If you wanna see that, check out my hotel room review uh, that I'll link at the end of this video as soon as it's done. Coming soon, an IV drip lounge in case you've had too hard of a night uh, and you need to recover, and then uh, another salon over here. Okay, let's go ahead and drop down to the ground floor, but you can see just like the vibe and the theming of this. They've done, uh, even though the theme isn't like overt, it's pretty cool elements here with the plants and the arches. Okay, let's go ahead and drop down this escalator. And so as we go down here, first I'm gonna look up because you'll see there's a super grand chandelier right up there. And then as we look down, there are some plants here right at the entrance. As I say, this is probably the, I'd call this the second entrance or the minor entrance off the strip. This is the more northerly one that's closer to the Sahara. The other entrance is closer to the Circus Circus. Uh, to the left is uh, a clothing store that looks to be opening soon, but not open yet. We're gonna come here and turn right and we're gonna check out the hotel check-in area, and then we'll come and check out the casino area. So here in the lobby bar, it's a, like, it's a cool looking bar. I mean, they've got like the drinks in the center and these blue velvety things. This one is called Collins. And let me tell you, all the employees here, because they've only been open two weeks, still really happy, smiling, having a good time. They've got some uh, trees for the Christmas holiday and uh, some nice plants on the pillars to hold it up, some art on the wall. There is lots of interesting art around here and we'll check out uh, more of the art pieces as we continue to walk around. Over here on the right is like the invited guests lobby. Uh, so high rollers, I think check in over there. So on the right, these are all of the check-in desks. Uh, what I find interesting are these pillars that are here on the right and they actually put like signs on it to say don't sit because people look like they want to sit on it but it turns out it's not really flat and so they had to tell people do not sit on there uh, this coming this way you see all these bow ties if you haven't noticed already the bow tie is like the ma mascot maybe like the mascot shape or drawing of the hotel 
I guess they've got two sets of invited guest lines. There's one, and then there's that what looks like that other room. This takes us over to the self park parking garage. It's a really big parking garage. There are two entrances from the parking garage into the hotel. This is the guest elevators. And then there's a second one that brings you kind of like towards the back, towards the convention center. Uh, and right over here is the hotel's gift shop, uh, FB Express. I thought that meant food and beverage express at first, but it really means Fountain Blue Express. And one thing, uh, that's the trend of hotel gift shops. There are no prices on anything in there. Uh, anything you want to buy, uh, you only know the price if you take it up to the cash register. And I guess I can't fault the Fountain Blue for doing that. Like that's the trend of all hotels in Vegas now. I just find it to be quite annoying. Uh, we've got the bell desk that's over here and the concierge desk that's on the back. And then over here outside that we'll take a look at, this is the valet drop-off uh, or main drop-off at the hotel, taxi rank. And if you're looking for uh, the fountain at Fountain Blue, you'll find it out here. Lots of high-end hotels, so uh, if you come here, lots of uh, people picking up your luggage. Hi there, thank you very much. I'll give you a pound. I appreciate it. And uh, here we have the fountain at Fountain Blue. We've got a uh, little car over here. And this is the taxi rank. So if you're waiting for a taxi, you wait over here. And then uh, you can see right here, there are some, uh, those beach chairs again, where you can sit and wait for the cars. And then just over here is kind of a little interesting outdoor garden. I don't think that'll bring you anywhere per se, uh, but now I'm gonna go ahead and go back in back to the lobby bar and pick you up from over there. I planned a route that I didn't have to backtrack too much, but I did have to backtrack right here. That's the lobby bar. Turn the camera around again. Uh, on the right is that minor entrance on the north side of the strip. And now this brings us to the uh, casino or the gaming floor that will walk around the edges of it to check out the shops and restaurants. We've got Graf, the most fabulous jewels in the world. Uh, and what I find interesting about the slot machines here, while there's a lot of them, I'm gonna call none of them great. They're like none of the Wheel of Fortune or the branded movie ones. They tend to be the ones that are like, um, I don't know, you'd find it like Native American casinos. This is the guest elevators. You have to show your room key card to go up into the elevators, Cartier is opening here on the left. But again, back to the slot machines, I think that maybe Fountain Blue doesn't have the same deals that like MGM and Caesar does with some of the companies that make what I'll call the cooler slot machines. Uh, over here, we've got the high limit slots. You will find one Wheel of Fortune over in there. Uh, and the casino, it's, uh, as we kind of walk around the outside, maybe it seems big in this video, but it's actually not that big. It's actually a pretty small casino floor for a hotel that has over 3,000 rooms. That's right, 3,000 rooms in here. Uh, this building is the tallest inhabitable building in Las Vegas. Yes, the stratosphere is taller, but the stratosphere is not inhabitable. The actual like hotel part of the stratosphere is much smaller. Uh, and then over here to the left is the high limit table games. And then we have an interesting restaurant over here. This is called Washing Potato. Washing Potato is a dim sum restaurant uh, that I have yet to see open in my two days here. It wasn't open last night and it's not open now, uh, but it looks like maybe it'll be open a little later today. I did check in pretty late last night, so maybe that's why I didn't see them. Over here, we have one of the other breakfast options at the hotel, uh, Vida Vida, which offers a all day brunch. Uh, brunch favorites, things like huevos rancheros, American breakfast, eggs benedict in there. The 24 hour cafe is Chez Bonbon. Bon. Over here, French inspired, where you can get kind of like French pastries, desserts, fruits, yogurt, and of course, coffee. Uh, the crepes are pretty good. I had the Dulce de Leche crepe with bananas last night. 
And this is one of the really big sculptures that's in here. This is at the um, other valet entrance or other entrance from the parking garage. And uh, these escalators will take you up to the convention center. If something's running, the south valet is right below us. Some interesting art that's back on the wall over here. Uh, make sure you get like back to this spot and check this out. It's easy to miss because it's kind of in the back corner. The doors behind it will also take you out to the Las Vegas Convention Center expansion that they uh, have just finished up. It's basically right across the street from this part of the hotel. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into the main gaming floor. We've got uh, some more shops that look like they'll be coming here on the left, not yet open, or just a billboard. I'm not sure. It's sort of hard to tell what's finished and what's not finished at this point. Uh, that might just be a fancy, a fancy poster on the wall. Some uh, nice, oh wow, kind of like fancy doors here. And uh, there's a shop coming soon in here. What is it gonna be? I don't know, it's gonna have plants, it has scaffolding, so something interesting coming in there. Okay, uh, we see the big lobby bar there again, the blue bar as they call it. I feel like the blue bar should have more blue, but everything has like blue in the vibe. Blue leather for the chairs at the gaming tables. Uh, this is the uh, casino uh, cashier, uh, the Fountain Blue Rewards. We passed, it was back there. If you're like coming to sign up for the Fountain Blue Rewards program, you would do that there. Over here is, uh, we're coming up on the sports book, uh, but the first one that we come up on is an interesting little bar. This is the solo club where they have uh, table games in there, um, but they've made it kind of like its own little bar or club in there for the table games, kind of dark and moody inside. This is the sports book, so if you wanna do your sports betting, you would do that in here. Full bar in the center. There's also video poker too. These elevators are the ones where we kind of like started by the food court and we saw those. The sports book is called The Tavern. And so it's sports book plus seats. You can see the video poker at the bar right there. And this brings us to the main entrance to the hotel. This is the entrance off of Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, this is the entrance that's closest to the Circus Circus. So this is the one that probably most people would come into. They have this interesting sculpture here that is supposed to mimic like waves or the motion of the ocean or something like that. Uh, and I guess maybe because people were getting too close or too many people were touching it, they have like a security guard that like just hangs around this uh, piece of art. And then if we come around this way, we'll check out the last mm, leg of the casino floor that we haven't seen yet. Over here on the left, we have Don's Prime Steakhouse. How much do the steaks cost us at this place? Uh, Snake River Farms American Steak, $100, or four ounces of Wagyu for $300. Caviar, $220. Roasted Seafood Plateau, 210 So you can tell Fountain Blue is definitely not going for the Circus Circus low end. They're definitely going for the high luxury end of things. Uh, and, you know, definitely like, it's, it's daytime right now, it's like noon, so people are wearing their typical Vegas stuff. But at nighttime, people generally get quite dressed up in here at Mother Wolf. This is a interesting uh, looking spot. What do we got here? Uh, it is a Italian restaurant where you get uh, pasta, pizza, uh, many of them have no prices, so that tells you uh, how much that's gonna be. All right, uh, Gucci is opening over there. And then finally, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the lobby bar. Uh, and I think a good way to do it is as we go up this escalator and just take a great gander down onto the casino floor from this sort of moving vantage point. Not too many people hanging out at the lobby bar right now at noon, but it does get quite busy in the nighttime. 
Well, fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more about the Fountain Blue, as soon as my room review is done, you can check it out right here, or you can see more of my Vegas videos right here in my entire Las Vegas travel series. As usual, I won't say goodbye, because I'll see you in the next video.